Hey, what's up, everybody? You're listening to the Enterprise Architecture Radio. If you're thinking about organizational complexity and agility, if you're concerned about operational efficiencies and are thinking of taking it to the next level, if managing innovation is one of your priorities, you have come to the right place. On this podcast, we talk about all of that and more. It's a jungle out there, and we will attempt to navigate this jungle of frameworks, methods, and most importantly, enterprise architecture in practice. Welcome to the episode five of the Enterprise Architecture Radio. Today, let's take a real use case. A few days back, I called my bank, let's say Bank H, to get my car loan interest certificate. I got on a call and they started with a brief IVR that said, thanks for calling H Bank. Uh, please press nine if you would like to talk to a super priority customer representative. So I pressed nine and he started by saying, welcome to the super priority customer care. And by the way, I happen to be a super priority customer with the top of the line account and the best credit card. And so anyways, he goes, I hope you and your friends and family are doing well. How can I help you today? A very long welcome message if you ask me. So I tell him that I need the car loan interest certificate for the year 21, 22, and a very interesting set of conversations ensue. He says, he's going to have to transfer me to the loan department. And after a few minutes of waiting and listening to a long recording and a convoluted IVR, my phone gets disconnected. So I decided to try again. Same recording, same short IVR, same guy picks up the phone again with a long welcome message. I explain everything again. He says he will transfer me to the loan department again. This time, miraculously, I do get through the IVR and reach a customer support rep. She asks me all the standard questions for verification again with my phone number, date of birth and address. And then she asked me how she can help me. I told her about the car loan interest certificate again. And she asked me for the loan account number, which by the way, I did not remember. So she asked me for the car registration number. And I asked her if she can pull it with my phone number. But for some reason, she insisted on the car registration number. Well, I give it to her and then she tells me that I will receive an SMS with a link, which is kind of suspicious. And then I have to click on it and then it takes me to a website where it confirms my identity with an OTP to my registered mobile number. So I provide the OTP because the site looks valid. And then she makes me fill up a long form asking me details about what I need. And then I reach the last field that asks me which year I want the certificate for. And the only options that I have is 2018, 2019, 2019, 2020, and 2020, 2021 provisional. There is no option for 2021, 22. When I asked her, she said she can't give me the certificate because 2022 is not over yet. So I had to explain to her, a bank official, what a financial year means, and literally telling her that I want a loan interest certificate from April 1st, 21 to March 2022. And considering that this is July, it's doable. She had my account details, my phone number, my email address. She had me verified. All she could do was raise a complaint. Yes, we've gotten to the almost half of the podcast and we're still not getting anywhere. So long story short, she couldn't help me. I called my relationship manager and then he got it done, which I should have done in the first place. But there's a lesson here. Let's look at how things can be changed from an enterprise architecture standpoint to improve the user experience. In our case, there are only two stakeholders here. There's the customer and the support rep. So first of all, the customer as a stakeholder should be treated as a single entity by the whole enterprise and all lines of businesses, which means everyone within the enterprise should be able to pull all the relationships that the customer has with the enterprise everyone who is officially allowed to have access to this data, that is. Uh, so for example, if I have a credit card, a home loan, and a super priority banking account, any customer rep or relationship manager should be able to help me with any help that I need with any of my products within seconds. The customer, that's me for example, should be able to access all his products, bank account, credit card information, loan account, from a single interface using a single set of credentials. 
Now, let's come to the service rep. The service rep should have access to all the information he needs to manage the customer account and provide him with the help required. He should be empowered and have a sufficient authority to take decisions so that he can resolve the issue within seconds while on the phone call. Let's look at processes, right? We've looked at the stakeholders, now let's move on to processes. All processes should be simple. I can get into the personas of all different kinds of customers, but in the interest of time, I'm going to split them into just two, super priority customer and regular customer. So super priority customer usually prefer talking to a relationship manager on the phone to get their things done. That should be made simple after the first authentication is done. Minimal IVR, minimal recorded message, and a short and succinct welcome message with the customer's name in it. The system should give access to the customer's name based on the registered mobile number. When I call my relationship manager, he starts with a, hi, Das, sir, and I love it. Short, succinct, and personable. The idea is to save as much time as possible and get to the issue. Regular customer should be provided self-service and the website and app should be simple. Again, single interface and single set of credentials for all products and services and an easy to understand user interface. For example, if I have to download a statement, it first asks me details such as which account and then dates of statement and so on and so forth. And then once I click and generate, it tells me to come back to the website after a few minutes and download it once it's ready. Interestingly, if I wait a few minutes, the session will expire, which means I have to go through the login process again. It is either that, or I have to keep clicking and browsing and performing some activity on the website for a few minutes to keep the session active. It only takes a few seconds to generate the statement. Why not allow the customer to wait and then download it there and then? Or just say, this is going to take some time. Uh, would you want us to email you the statement to your registered email ID instead? There are several far more intuitive ways uh, of doing the same thing than expecting the customer to log back into the account just to download the statement. All right, so that's the processes and about how to make the processes simpler for both super priority customers and um, regular customers. Now, let's look at organizations. I don't know the internal log structure of the bank, but from outside, I can already see that there are some silos between the loan department and the accounts department. The loan department has no clue about who I am, what kind of relationship I have with the accounts department. Even the login credentials are different. Uh, this means we'll have to break the silos and get the departments to work with each other. Recognize the customer to be one entity and benefit from each other's data. Help in marketing and upselling efforts as well. Let's look at applications and data. How can they support a unified view we just talked about? First of all, websites will have to change and get unified. Today, I have two set of credentials and I only um, access my loan account, by the way, once a year or so, which means the credentials are either expired or I have forgotten them, which means I have to go through the process of reset password every time I log in. Again, an inconvenience. I understand it is required for my own security, but isn't there a better way? How about a single website, a single app, and a single set of credentials that allow me access to all my products, whether loans, accounts, credit cards, or what have you. Once we've figured this much out, the technology is really not so complex to figure out. How the applications will be hosted, public cloud, private cloud, will there be automation, CI, CD, all that is an implementation detail that we can handle very easily. The tough part is really the bigger picture, the proverbial forest from the trees. As you can see, enterprise architecture is a very interesting subject. Once you understand it, you start seeing opportunities for improvement everywhere in every aspect of your life. Whether you are interacting with a bank, working with a government entity, or buying groceries at a mall, for that matter. Wherever you see processes and systems, you see enterprise architecture. Now, before I end the episode today, I would like to make an announcement. On popular demand from some of our listeners and followers, we are conducting a live webinar on Sunday, September 11th, 2022. I know it's a horrible date, September 11th, but hey, it's just a date. We will be discussing enterprise architecture, why TOGAF is the best EA framework, and how doing a TOGAF certification can be beneficial for you. To register for the live webinar, visit enterprisearchitectureradio.com. You'll see the registration form on the right-hand side of the screen. It's very easy to remember enterprisearchitectureradio.com. See you in the webinar.
That's all I have for you today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the show. More about innovation, enterprise architecture, and how we can implement these ideas in the practical world, in the business, right here on this show. Do not forget to subscribe. Thank you for telling your friends about the show and supporting us. If you want to find out more about us, you can visit us at enterprisearchitectureradio.com. If you have ideas, thoughts, disagreements, feel free to write to me directly. We also have a Telegram group. And if you would like to contribute to the EA discussions there, just search for Enterprise Architecture Radio on Telegram. Or the URL to join the group is https colon slash slash t dot me slash Enterprise Architecture Radio. I'm very easy to find on LinkedIn as well. You can find all my contact details in the show notes. Once again, I hope you had fun and I'll see you in the next one.